be here tonight to uh, talk a little bit about our company. And by the way, also I have uh, Noah Sturkin, our CTO here in the audience, so that uh, he can pitch in when we get to question and answers, or if there is some uh, something here that uh, you wanted to hear more about. Um, so we're going to talk about an opportunity now that we have available to uh, integrate inductors on chip. And we're talking about uh, uh, inductors with a ferromagnetic material that we have developed and that we are transferring um, in, in production right now. The problem that we are trying to address is the discrete voltage regulators. You're very familiar with um, you know, the kind of space that these inductors are taking. And not only is the space of the inductors, but also everything that they drag along. I mean, you have to put a whole bunch of other circuits and, and a bunch of capacitors and other things on the board because the inductors are bulky and cannot fit on the package or on the chip. Therefore, this is in a, in a, in a board of a server, for example, the space that they take. And here is, is on the iPhone 5, we have two PMIX. One is, um, is a dialog PMIX, and the other one is a Qualcomm PMIX. And all this space pretty much is all the power management. And you see how much space on the board this takes. Now, space is very, very important, especially down here, where you, know, you can uh, trade some of the space off for a bigger battery or something like that. So it's really essential. The solution is uh, to have, and I apologize for this, kind of like in the translation, <laughs> got a little shrunk so that there is some uh, overriding. I haven't seen this <laughs> until now in this screen. Um, but, um, sorry. Uh, the solution is to have integrated voltage regulators. And basically, we can make the buck converter small enough so they can be directly integrated on, on, on a chip. And here's the basic the idea. Here's uh, your inductors and your decoupling capacitors, uh, the power switches, and the power integration I see is they all go on the board today. And that's what you saw in that picture before. And here's your processor. And uh, here is. Um, when you integrate the inductors on chip, you can take a, make a power integrate voltage regulator and you can flip chipping on the package, for example. And you can save power, space, and cost. What you're doing, um, you're reducing power for a number of reasons, including that you're reducing the IR losses to go from uh, the high current levels that would have to go on the board and then go through the package to your uh, processor. But also, as we have uh, more and more processors that are multi-cores, you can have uh, independent power supplies that, and take advantage uh, of power savings also for fine grain design for voltage and frequency scaling. That is really huge, it's cubic in power in what you can do by enabling uh, dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. So our company is a fabulous company. Believe it or not, we are in New York City. That's great, we got the, it's a spin-off of, uh, we're very close, uh, our CTO, Noah Sturka, went to Columbia University as a PhD from there. And so it's a great source of uh, people for us, and one of the founders is Professor Ken Shepard from Columbia. Um, we have uh, two sets of technology elements. We have the process and the inductor libraries on one side, and then we have chips and circuit IP. And we do have a sign um, earlier this year at the SMC license, a business partnership. So we are addressing the market with a very simple and business model. The process and the inductor libraries are directly available from TSMC, um, and the chips are available from Ferric, and the circuit IP is license, license, uh, can be licensed from us, basically. And it's a very flexible business model so that we can enable your design first with a chip, and then we can take that core and we can be transferred as an IP if you want to go through that. And since this is a new thing, it's a new device, a new technology, um, we expect that that would be the fastest way to go to market for, for, for you. What happens here is that in the back end of the line of TSMC, after you are done with the top level of metal, instead of putting the bumps here, we just put deposit this magnetic material, then we pattern it. Then we put some copper vias and another layer, layer, thick layer of copper on top. So we have two thick layer of copper and the copper vias in between. So that this copper is actually, you see that little cut here, it's spiraling. You can see this uh, with a view from the top. So you have the copper that is really basically spiraling around. And the gray is the magnetic material. And so you can have all sorts of different configurations in a toroid you know, uh, or, or that, that you wish. Um, and, and the beauty of this is that um, we have these inductor libraries, but they can, be, um, um, they can be integrated on any node. Now, of course, we have to um, give you 
just uh, qualify this on, on different nodes, but in principle, um, you know, we can transfer this very easily from one technology to another. Uh, those inductors can be also on top of the chip, like here, or can also be an interposer, so you can have a lot of flexibility on uh, integration and implementation. Now, we can provide up to uh, more than 5 amps per square millimeter, and current density utilization factors near 100%. So this is uh, really uh, a great, uh, great, great technology. Um, now, the libraries are full libraries. They have a fixed inductor designed for a broad range of current voltage and density requirement. This is an example uh, we've done. Um, and see that the, the resistance in function of frequency, uh, the inductors in function of frequency. Uh, we will provide, we're providing, um, you know, models, uh, experimental verified broadband circuit models, and uh, the layout are optimized for inductance and current density low. Um, one, one of the things we can show you here, I didn't point out, that is that the pitch of these inductors is really matched to the pitch of the C4s, of the, of the bumps. So you can really, uh, you know, uh, match uh, the way that you want it. So in principle, uh, it is not necessarily, um, you know, consuming any real estate on, on silicon. Because if you do your design properly and we can really work this way, um, you know, you don't need to increase the, the area of silicon. So you can uh, have your processor, when you integrate it directly on an IP point of view, do this smartly, it's just basically the same area of silicon and you can add those inductors on top. Of course, you do need the circuits in any case, but... Um, now, as we said, we have optimized, uh, we've been working with this for many years now, both at Columbia University and now at Ferric. Um, and we, have, uh, we also had the partnership for a few years with IBM. We're still partnering with them uh, on uh, some uh, applications for, uh, uh, for some uh, servers. Um, so we, the bug converters are uh, small enough uh, that can be integrated. And our PIVRs are, um, use the CMOS uh, with the, our power inductor for a very efficient high density on chip package power. This is uh, an example. This is um, the nose of uh, Lincoln on a penny. And so this is uh, about um, 1.2 millimeter by 2.4 millimeter. And this is the same size of an 04, 08, 0805 uh, uh, decoupling capacitor. So basically, if you have already a package with decoupling capacitors, the package would be the same. You just you have to just do a simple wiring. You know, well, you have to redesign the package to accommodate those instead than the decoupling capacitors. So there is a number of different product implementation. Of course, uh, we can have a parent management IC that can be now flip chip directly on board that does not need external inductors or external components. Um, of course, now it makes a lot more sense to move it as close as possible to the processor. And since it's flip chip, it can be, now it can be done because as long as the inductors are on chip, you can really do that. If the inductors are not on chip, you cannot do, it doesn't make any sense to do that because um, now you can do it and you can put it right next. And that's the example of the PIVR that I gave you before. So this is not to scale. The PIVR is the same size as the decoupling capacitors. And then, um, uh, we can also integrate those in different um, stacked integrated voltage regulators. So, you know, this is an interposer example, but you know that there is all sorts of different packaging that, for example, TSMC is offering now. Uh, and finally, once you're here and you test it and it works, then you can move it in. As I mentioned, um, the technology is independent of the process node. We do have to uh, just verify the models and so on. We're planning to qualify over the next uh, year or so uh, for various nodes, but it just the models have to be validated. And so just uh, to go back to my, the business model flexibility that we mentioned, uh, we can provide those chips and those chips at the beginning, so to show you um, what is available, what is possible. And then, um, you know, as you evolve and you wanted to integrate that, we will provide you the IP. Or we provide the IP right away from the beginning if you already know what you want and what you need to do. Um, so, in summary, it's, um, this is a high value technology. We're talking about a, a pretty significant the market size. We have the best in class integrated voltage regulators that are available for the power management market. Uh, we have this partnership with TSMC and we're co delivering complete solution with a very flexible business model just to adapt to whatever you, um, you, wanna, you need to do. 
and um, we have a very highly technical team in New York, but <laughs> we, we travel, so <laughs> we travel to you. Uh, and um, um, so uh, hopefully you can use uh, Ferric technology and IP to plan for your next chip. So um, um, let's uh, stay and talk and uh, let's open it for questions. And uh, again, uh, Noah Sturken, our CTO, is here that uh, will be also available to answer some of your questions. Yeah. Any, any, someone have a question? Good. Speak to the speaker now. Can, uh, the power, uh, can we do power conversion on chip? I'm thinking of an idea of driving a chip from a single voltage and uh, generating uh, all, all the voltages I need on chip. Sorry, what, sorry what was the... I, could, could you repeat? I'm thinking of an idea of driving a chip from a single voltage. And uh, you're asking if that's possible? You need three different chips, three different voltage out of one chip. No problem. Okay, yeah, sorry. So just so everyone understands, the question was, can you, uh, can you derive multiple output voltages from a single chip? And the answer is absolutely yes. The, the inductors that Maurizio was showing, they're, they're very small and very scalable. So for that single chip, the size of an 0805 capacitor, that actually had eight inductors on it. It's an eight-phase interleaved buck converter. So it would be very easy to say, uh, you know, I don't need five amps uh, from one voltage. I need two different voltages, and each have two amps. So we just take that chip and just just cut it in half, almost. And that's multiple multiple voltages from the same chip. Any other questions? Did Did you already t talk about when the IP is available with TSMC? Uh, no, but it's going to be available soon. It's just uh, uh, basically we expect uh, uh, to have the technology qualified. We have, we have a lead customer already, and that's what you need to qualify the, 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 the line and to qualify the technology. And uh, I would say early next year is definitely going to be available. But, you know, through us, if you want to work with us, we can you really can get started right away. You can get away. started right away, yes. Okay. We're already running, you know, full runs. Perfect. Oh, okay. Now, just wondering, uh, in particular, since you mentioned TSMC, they have a 0.18 BCD process, you know, that we're using right now. And, that, you know, I don't know, is that is that something that you guys are working on, too? Or, uh, so, or no, we're, we're not using the 0.18 BCD process at this time. I th with TSMC? Okay. Sorry. So, smaller geometries uh, with BCD? Okay. Be yeah, three 300 millimeter wafers, point, 0.13 and below. Okay. Okay. But, but, but it's agnostic, though, with the with, with it's, technology. It's agnostic. Uh, if if the process is ready to go, so it's just okay. really all TSMC needs is customers to come in and say, "I want this and this," and then and then they can put it together. Yeah. The. Uh, and you provide the models, and then like, what about like all the library components? And the CDFs and all, all this stuff in the process design kit. Did CSMC is building that, or did they build it already? It's, uh, it's it's coming it's together. Right yeah, I mean, okay. it, you know, if you had one thing in particular ready to go, we we might have it ready to go. Okay. Uh, it, it depends a little bit. I'm because you'll come in and you'll have specific requests, right? Right for spiral inductor. Let's yeah. Say this, so you'll you'll this have many some wines, many things. Right. So, so with those, then you provide that like fixed layouts, but it's not like a P-cell, primarized cell, it's just a fixed Yeah, I, actually, so... Uh, so it's not a scalable uh, model then yet. Yeah, and the reason for that is the, the magnetic materials and the inductors are very difficult to predict. So oh, rather yeah. than having some predictive model, right. it's, it's just much better to have a, an experimentally verified model. Absolutely. But that means you have a library instead of a P-cell. Okay, makes sense. But in any case, we would, we would provide the first line of defense. You can work directly with the SMC, but we will basically be the ones doing, doing the work and work with you. Or we can work with us. It's the same thing. 